want to give you a definition of a word from Webster's 1828 dictionary. The word is coadjutor. C-O-A-D-J-U-T-O-R. Coadjutor. <clears throat> One who aids another. An assistant. A fellow helper. An associate in operation. Two. In the canon law, one who is empowered or appointed to perform the duties of another. And coadjutor tricks or whatever, a female uh, coadjutor, whatever. But that's what a coadjutor is. Okay? A coadjutor, one who aids another, an assistant, a fellow helper, an associate in operation. Two, in the canon law, one who is empowered or appointed to perform the duties of another. Hence, Jesuit coadjutors. Okay, when you talk about Catholicism today, uh, when you say Catholic, you might as well be saying Jesuit. The Jesuit order is in complete control of the Vatican. Okay? The black pope, the most powerful man on the earth, Arturo Sosa, is the one who is running everything of the earth because of judgment. He's being allowed to, okay? But the white pope, Francis, okay, Francis, he is a Jesuit. And according to the teachings and the uh, doctrine of the Jesuit, uh, a Jesuit is um, subservient onto his superior. And Arturo Sosa, being the black pope, the head of all Catholicism, Sosa is subservient on, to, or excuse me, Francis is subservient on to Sosa. Okay? And a lot of these stupid, evil, wicked Christians that you will run into here online and out there, uh, a lot of them are Jesuit spiritual temporal coadjutors. Okay? They work with, for the Vatican in one way and or another. Some of them are, are aware, they know what they are doing, getting a paycheck, and whatever it is. There are some that know what they are doing and have chosen to serve the Vatican for their own betterment. Okay? There are those who do such in ignorance, not knowing that it's like, oh, wow, I'm actually serving the Vatican. Okay? All right? But the majority of what you and I, saints, you people are going to run into, are those who are knowingly, these are the ones who are teaching you nonsense. Nonsense. These are the ones who are saying that um, it's faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. These are the ones that are saying that once saved, always saved is heresy. These are the ones that are saying that the Christians are going through the Great Tribulation. Okay? <laughs> Alright? These are also the Trinitarians who spit on the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and demote Him to a second-class God. Okay? But see, also, also, what these people do is they will do deflection. Deflect. Chaff and redirect, it is called nowadays. But they will deflect. Deflect, okay? What? Take away from the Vatican. For example, the Jesuits who run and operate the Freemasons, okay? Not vice versa. You got to watch out for that line, okay? The Jesuits have made it so that people, when they get there, when they start realizing that, oh, wow, there is a conspiracy. Yes, there is. Oh, wow, there are these organizations that are in prominent positions. The Jesuits have set up the Freemasons to take the fall. So a lot of these people, they will talk about the Illuminati. The, Free the Illuminati was created by a Jesuit. Why stop? Okay? Why stop? All right? All right? <laughs> okay? But see, the, the Jesuits are using the Freemasons to deflect to take attention away from the Jesuit order. Okay? Alright? This is what the Jesuit order does. Alright? And those who serve the Vatican, whether ignorantly 
or knowingly do exactly that. Do what? They take away from the blame that is rightly deserved upon Satan's church, Mystery Babylon, the great Roman Catholicism, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Roman Catholicism is the perfection of the Babylonian religion. Okay? The perfection of it. All right? It began in Babylon. It was cultivated in Egypt. It is perfected in Rome. Okay? All right? There are two types of people that are in this kind of category in a way. Number one, ignorant. Ignorant. Hey, look, there ain't nothing wrong being ignorant in and of itself. You're ignorant until you know better. Okay? There's nothing wrong. Well, I'm ignorant. I don't, I don't know what that's, what that is. So what am I going to do? I'm going to be a Berean and search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so, so I be no more ignorant. Okay? But as a dear brother of ours said, um, uh, there is ignorance, not wanting, uh, not knowing, and then there is another type of ignorance, willful ignorance, not wanting to know. That's stupid. That's just plain old stupid. Okay? That is idiota and stupid. Not knowing and doing something, it's like, hey, hey, whoa, dude, hold on, let's, let's, here, let's, let's talk about this, okay? Then you're like, oh, oh, I didn't know that. I know you did. Now you do, okay? All right? But then again, there are those who will know, but they just don't want to accept it. They don't want to know the truth. That's stupidity, in my opinion. But those are the two kinds of ignorance. One is, you know, not knowing, kind of a uh, kind of innocence in a way, but then there's the other, not wanting to know, which is stupidity. And then, of course, there are the ones who are blatantly, knowingly serving the devil and his church, the Vatican. Okay. All right. So one is either ignorant or purposely serving Satan and his church, the Vatican. Okay? And one of the things that you see with these coadjutors, and one of the one of the biggest red flags to you, any of you, is when you got some senile old fat trying to tell you that Mystery Babylon is America. How does this happen? How does this happen? Now, I have to mention this. His, his righteousness, his holiness from Maine. He, a couple number of years ago, in refuting the sodomite Stephen Adders, uh, defending, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, in exposing the sodomite Stephen Adder, Anderson, his holiness from Maine, a couple of years ago, did a wonderful, truly good series of videos showing and proving categorically as if, anyway, that America is not Mystery Babylon, okay? I don't know if those videos are available on his thing nowadays. He might have taken them off and have you guys pay him money in order to get his thing so you can watch them. That's whatever. But he did address this thoroughly, okay? He really did. When credit is due, you have to give credit to those who, unto whom it is due, okay? And His Holiness from Maine, he did that whole thing of the America is not Babylon, and he knocked it out of the park. It was wonderful, okay? Any questions about that? You can go and find his stuff on that. Hey, you got to give the credit where it's due, okay? I don't like that man. I don't trust him as far as I can throw him. But you got to give the credit to where it's due. Okay? But see, what has happened? How do people fall and believe in this nonsense that America, America, is Mystery Babylon? Okay? 
Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along in the authorized version of the scriptures, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we will be looking at today. Be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Follow along, okay? Follow along because sometimes the mouth will go quicker than the brain. I have to say this in all my videos, okay, that the Lord allows me to do. I have to say that, okay? So, how does this happen? How do a populace get so ignorant, willful ignorant, of the Word of God, the authorized version? Well, you just you know, look on that disgusting Christian book, Dot com and look at all the plethora F.A. of the Bibles that are available. Okay, and you know, textual criti uh, criticism, you know what that is? Number one, it's a Jesuit creation, but it's a satanic creation. You know what cre uh, textual criticism is? Uh, let me show you that real quickly. In Genesis chapter 3, okay, brethren, you know this. This is a warning for these people, for any of you who are going to fall for some idiot who's going to try to tell you that America is Mystery Babylon. People, listen to me. America is not Mystery Babylon. Israel is not Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon is Rome. Please, do not fall for these lying devil coadjutors. Please. And see, saying that anything other than Rome is Mystery Babylon, you are deflecting, deflecting away from Rome. Hence, hence, aiding Rome. Do you get it? It's like you causing a big uproar, speaking against the Vatican, while yet yoking up with the Vatican on December 25th. Okay? Okay? In that way, whatever, okay? Aiding the Vatican. Okay? Alright? But, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, here's textual criticism for you. Now the serpent, that, that Satan, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Satan is a created being. Okay? And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Yea, hath God said. That's textual criticism. Okay? And because of textual criticism, and these idiots who have the, well, uh, the, the, the King James is the best one that we got, but it's not perfect. And what do they mean? The originals were perfect. Only the ones that were originally written. Those are the ones. And even the Jesuit trained cemeterians uh, will say, well, the originals don't exist, but we do have them locked up in Rome. Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. People, people, listen to me. Okay. Your preference and what God has written is irrelevant. This is God's perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. This is it. The authorized version. This is perfect. Okay? The Hebrew, the Greek, the Aramaic, the, uh, uh, all the, the, the Latin and stuff like that, those were stepping stones, the seven purifications that brought us to the perfect English. Okay? All right? But, it is because of this, it is because of this, people are willing to accept and believe somebody who uses high, like, like uses uh, technical sounding words, who bring out these uh, very complex words. There's nothing wrong with having a uh, vocabulary, no. But see, a lot of these guys will use these great swelling words, these, you know, these high sound, these uh, technical sounding words to make themselves sound as if they are intelligent, as if they have the Spirit of God in them. See, they hide the fact that they are not saved by using these fancy schmancy words 
to impress you. Okay? All right? And see, that's the beauty of the authorized version. The authorized version doesn't use fancy schmancy language to deceive because this is God's word. Okay? This is easy. Contrary to what the devil will have you to believe, dear friend, the authorized version is very plain and very simple to understand. Okay? But what has happened? What has happened? Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8. Like I said, His Holiness did an incredible work um, exposing, refuting the sodomite Stephen Anderson, um, where he did the whole slew of videos, America is not Babylon. I think he did like uh, 12 or 20. I don't know. I don't know. I don't pay attention to that guy at all. I have to give the credit to where it is due. If you want to find those, if he hasn't taken them down off of his channel and charging you for them, that, that, whatever. But if you can find those, go ahead, okay? He did a very good job on those. He really did, okay? Got to give the credit to where it's due, okay? I don't like them. I don't trust them, okay? Not at all. But got to give the credit where it's due. But what has happened? Amos chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. Now, verses 11 and 12 will come in, will be fulfilled in its entirety during the time of Jacob's trouble, with the inception of the mark of the beast, and plus the body of Christ, the church of the living God, will not be on the earth. Okay? A friend of my wife, uh, today we found out, a friend of my wife saw a bumper sticker, and I'm quoting the bumper sticker. This bumper sticker apparently said, uh, uh, once the rapture happens, the earth will be ours. Now, of course, rapture is not in the authorized version. The catching away, uh, the redemption of the purchased possession is, but rapture is not in the scriptures. Okay? But think about that. Think about that. Okay? Now, let's use, say it as it ought to be said. Okay? We said, uh, when the redemption of the purchased possession happens, that man of sin, the son of perdition, will be revealed. And Satan, Satan, through that man, will have unhindered control, unhindered whatever to do on the earth. Because he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That's from Second Thessalonians chapter 2. The he who is now letting, hindering, is we the body of Christ. And once the Lord says, come up hither and we get caught up, all you people who get left behind, you, you can't imagine it. You have a horrific account of what's going to be, what it's going to be like. You need to get saved today. You don't have to go through that time. But, we see in Amos chapter 8, verses 11 and 12, partial of this happening today. How so? Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but hearing the words of the Lord. Okay? Now, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the body of Christ is not going to be on the earth. And the, 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 the 144,000 Jews are... Jews, okay, they're the only ones that are sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. Hey, nitwits, you idiot! The 144,000 Jews, they're not around today, you idiot! They're not! They're not! And someone, oh, well, the 144,000, they're here today, but they're undercover. The, the Lord rebuke you, you lying devil heretic, you Jesuit Catholic coadjutor! <coughs> Oh, I'm being a little harsh. You have no idea, pal. Okay? You're lying. And, and, you're covering up for the Vatican. You scum. You scum. Take offense. Take a gate, boy. Grow up while you're at it. But, hearing of the words of the Lord. Now, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the body of Christ is not going to be on the earth. The mark of the beast is going to be implemented. And once someone takes the mark of the beast, ipso facto, they go into hell. You can't lop it off, gouge it out, 
Once you take that mark of the beast, you're going to hell. All these easy believism devils, all these heretics are trying to convince you people that it's once saved, always saved, from beginning to end. That is not the truth. Faith alone from... That is not the truth. Okay? Once this dispensation ends, the time of Jacob trouble, time of Jacob's trouble begins, and it's faith and works during that time. Okay, the only ones who are sealed are the 144,000 Jews that get sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. People, behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing of the word, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Okay, hearing the words of the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The authorized version is the word of God. Period. The NIV, the non King James, the ESV, the net wet living in the trash, the New American Standard, uh, MacArthur's version. The mess, the new revised standard, the revised standard version, whatever, toilet paper. Okay? So when you got these Christians in the buildings, the phallus houses, okay, and these guys online, okay, not using the scriptures, but using the Bible, you're not hearing the words of God. You're not. You're not. And these Christians, they don't even they don't even take their Bibles to their church buildings nowadays. No. Why? Because they're taught from the Jesuits that to trust in the man who's been through their schools, to trust in the man that has a hundred thousand dollar piece of paper on their wall that says, Satan has qualified me to speak these things. And they always come out against what? They have God said they always everything that these Jesuit trained cemeterians do is contrary to the word of God. Okay? So people are not hearing the words of the Lord. There are those out there who do use the scriptures. Yes, yes, yes. Okay? Someone who is a saint, who has truly been called to serve the Lord in this capacity, they will use the authorized version of the scriptures. Now, there are devils out there who do use the authorized version of the scriptures. But see, they, they twist that too. Okay? Perfect example. Sodomite Stephen Anderson, who serves the Vatican. Why? Because he teaches that uh, Christ is going through the great tribulation. He's against rightly dividing the word of truth. He hates the Jews. But yet he uses the scriptures. He does. So you got to watch out for these things, brethren, people. <clears throat> Verse 12. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Now people like to say that, well, this proves that the scriptures will not be around during the time of Jacob's trouble. No. It's that they won't be able to find it. It's not that it's not there. They won't be able to find it because during the time of Jacob's trouble, again, the body of Christ is not on the earth. You will have Moses and Elijah, the two witnesses. You'll have the 144,000 sealed Jews. And also you have the mark of the beast, okay? That's why right now in this dispensation is when you need to get saved, okay? But see, this is partially happening today because of knowledge is increasing, but yet people are don't know who God is. They know who Satan is. And you got to watch out for these devils too because they like to take the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> Sermon on the Mount. I love the Sermon on the Mount. I do. I do. I do. Doctrinally, it is not written for us today. Faith only appears one time in the Sermon on the Mount, you idiot. Okay? And it's in the form of a rebuke. All right? Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven, which comes after the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But see, because of Satan's, yea, hath God said, and these people using 
fancy schmancy language to give up to to work in the suspension of disbelief that they're saved but they're not okay now hey there's nothing more wrong with using you know having a vocabulary but see we as saints we are to speak plainly okay all right John MacArthur is a good example of what I'm talking about he uses well he's educated he's his own God okay a Calvinist and don't even get me started on that nonsense okay but there again he uses these big fancy schmancy words okay he's a scholar okay and see you people have been trained to think because of the Jesuits that a scholar automatically means a saved man. True wisdom is the beginning of knowledge. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord, and departing from evil is understanding. Okay? Someone who loves the Lord Jesus Christ, who is a saint, truly saved, loves his word, the authorized version, and believes every word of it, in a saints as such will come more knowledge and more truth of God than one of these guys who use all this fancy high tech uh, 1984 Orwellian language. Okay, you gotta watch out for the words. Okay, you gotta watch out for this. Okay, and in Second Timothy chapter four, Second Timothy chapter four. Okay, Second Timothy chapter four. Paul says, we are to abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. You know what abhor means? It means extreme hatred. We are to hate what is evil and love what is good. And there is none good but God. And Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? But, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and verse 4. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick alive, and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and feelings. Oh, excuse me. With all long suffering and uh, scholarship. Oh, I'm sorry. Exhort with all long suffering <laughs> and um, degree. Preach the word, be instant, in season, and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on the fables. God loves you unconditionally. Unless you forgive, you won't be forgiven. That's for the time of the kingdom of heaven, you idiot. Hey, if you're, if you're ignorant of that, you don't know, I'm not calling you an idiot. I'm calling an idiot these people who knowingly are deceiving people. Okay? Knowingly doing it. Knowingly serving the Vatican. That's my enemy. You're my enemy. You're, you're defending Rome. You're taking away the blame, shifting away from Rome. You're my enemy. You're my enemy. You're saying, and you're going to twist the scriptures, that America is Babylon? When, when any, even, a, you know, even some of these coadjutor devils here on YouTube, and other, they have to, they have to, to put up the suspension of disbelief. Their facade, they have to at least acknowledge the truth. Yes, Roman Catholicism is Mystery Babylon. But when you got some putts trying to say, well, it's America. They're working for the Vatican. Someone like a babe may believe that in ignorance, okay? But see, when you become no more ignorant and are informed that, hey, it's Roman Catholicism, and then you want to continue. Well, I believe it's America. You're stupid. You're being willfully ignorant. Okay? 
you know the truth, but you just don't want to believe it. Again, there's the others that knowingly know that Revelation 17 is about Rome, but go to divert from Rome and say, it's America. That's, that's coadjutor for the Vatican, boy. Hey, you. That man, the man that would say that to you is not your friend. He is not your brother. Especially when they are always using big, fancy, schmancy language trying to deceive you. What does that mean? They're not ignorant. Such a man as that is not your friend or your brother. And again, the question has to be, are you saved? And in First Peter, First Peter, First Peter, chapter one, verses sixteen. On to uh, oh no, excuse me, Second Peter, chapter one, verses sixteen to the close of the chapter. Fables. God loves you unconditionally. <laughs> Christians are going to be going through the great tribulation. But uh, the body of Christ will be caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Fable. It's from faith, it's faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. That's a fable. That the body of Christ is going through the time of Jacob's trouble. That's a fable. Okay? That's a fable. America is Mystery Babylon? That's a fable. Okay? That's a fable. That's a lie. 16 on the 21 in 2 Peter, chapter 1. For we have not followed cunningly, de cunningly devised fables. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Okay? When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard, when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star, reference unto our Lord, arise in your hearts and the spirit of truth. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. And the Lord is that spirit. Okay? Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Oh, you got to pay the money to get this uh, brochure or whatever to get the core uh, teaching. You got to go to a cemetery school and be trained by Jesuits in order to know. No, 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 no. 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 Get a man, get a woman who loves the Lord, saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, loves the Lord. Loves the scriptures, trusts the scriptures, doesn't doubt it at all. You'll get more fruit, you'll get more from that than listening to some of these putzes. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. Okay? What about Paul? Paul. Now see, there is nothing wrong in and of itself with, you know, you go to a college and you, you use fancy schmancy words. There, in and of itself, there's nothing wrong with that. No, there isn't. Don't, don't mistake me. But see, what I have been seeing lately and what, I've, what us saints have known for a long time when you get these scholars and these people who use all this fancy schmancy rhetoric to 
to give off, to put off onto you that they are educated. And because they are educated and using all this fancy schmancy rhetoric and all these fancy schmancy words, trying to deceive you that they're actually saved. Let's, let's look at Paul a little bit. Okay? Let's look at Paul. Let's look at Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 1 on verse 6. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, Satan, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You know that disgusting piece of trash called the Amplified Bible? Okay? Okay? For example, Jesus wept. Two words. Okay? Simple. Direct. The Amplified Bible, as I reckon, would do probably use 18 words to describe Jesus wept. Okay? Not actually, because I haven't looked in an Amplified Bible for years. I don't even have one anymore. But that's what the Amplified Bible does. You know, 10 words in Scripture, and the Amplified Bible will use 25 to describe. It's, it's, it's nonsense, okay? That's why I'm so against euphemistic language, okay? All right? Making things so complex when it doesn't need to be, okay? For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, oh, which Jesus? There are all kinds of Jesuses. Even Charles Manson got that one right. Huh? Oh, there's the Jesus of the Catholics. Of course, the Jesus of Catholics, Satan, okay? There's the Jesus of the Morons, the Mormons, the Jesus of the Jehos, the Jesus of the Methodists, the Jesus of the Charismatics, okay? And so I, the Jesus of the Muslims, the Jesus of Atheism. Jesus of Taoism? What Jesus? What's Jesus? There's all kinds of Jesus. Uh, Jesus that is part two of a three person <laughs> trinity? For if he that cometh preacheth, preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which Ye have not accepted. Ye might well bear with him. The whoredom of, as for example, these streaming Christians. Think about this verse. Look at that verse. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. Okay? These streaming Christians claiming to be saved, using all this fancy schmancy rhetoric. Okay? And it's, it's entertainment. It's entertaining. It's a, it's a, it's a dung flinging context. A contest. Okay? That's all it is. Okay? But they're, they're whores. You streaming Christians, you're a bunch of whores. You take everybody any which way you can. In accordance with this verse. Okay? Ye might well bear with him. Let's dialogue. Let's talk. What fellowship hath Christ with Belial? What fellowship hath uh, light with dark? <laughs> okay? All right? Verse 5. For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chief apostles. Verse 6. But though I be rude in speech, I have heard people come to verse 6, though I be rude in speech, trying to justify their use of profanity. You're Christian, right? Because you just believe. You shouldn't use profanity, but hey, just because you believe in the saved. Corrupt communications, corrupt good manners. Okay? <laughs> we all, unless you're like a perfect creature, you know, like David Daniels, okay? Uh, I, I bet if that guy smacked his hand with a hammer, I doubt he would even, he'd be like, oh, shucks, okay? 
like I've told you before, the one time when we lived over on Madison Street, I dropped a pouch on my favorite toe and blood went everywhere. And because of the shock of the moment, I uttered, the, I dropped one of the biggest F-bombs that could have been heard in 10 counties over. Okay, and I was ashamed of that. Okay, accidents happen. Okay, things like that happen. But see, saints are like, oh, sorry, Lord. And you're more offended that you that the Lord heard you say that than the fact that you, like, dropped the couch on your favorite toe. Okay? I have heard people come to this, verse 6, to try to justify their use of profanity. Someone you trying to use the scriptures to justify profanity <laughs> I would very much doubt if that person is truly saved. Even novices, babes in Christ. Atheists! Atheists even! Are like, hey, you're claiming, I've seen this, I haven't run into this, but I've seen this. Atheists with some of these Christians who drop, you know, swears on their videos. And even atheists will be like, aren't you supposed to be a Christian and you you using that kind of language? But see, satanic Christianity can justify anything. But, but though I be rude in speech, Paul did not use profanity, by the way. Rude in speech, meaning that what he was saying was truth. He kept it simple. He kept it plain. And it was rude unto these people. Uh, because the word of God is contrary to your flesh. For the word of God can become a glory and a joy unto you. It has to be a suffering first. Okay? That's why the devils like to avoid the Romans 3, 10 through 18. They like to go after that to justify themselves and skip over brokenness, repentance, and calling upon the name of God. We've addressed that so many times before. Okay? But, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Yeah. And if that rude in speech was meaning that Paul was using profanity then he would be made manifest among them that he wasn't really a saint. Stupid argument that, that people have come to verse six, to, six there to justify profanity. Yeah. Acts chapter 22. You know, Paul. Paul could have probably have become the next high priest. He probably could have. And there really isn't all that much evidence but one could surmise that might have been what Paul's aim was okay but in Acts chapter 22 verse 3 just one verse I am verily a man which am a Jew born in Tarsus a city in Cilicia yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers and was zealous toward God as ye all are this day. And of course we know Galatians chapter 1, Galatians chapter 1, Galatians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the Christians, persecuted the church of God, And wasted it. And profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. The traditions of my fathers. Hmm? And also Philippians chapter 3. So that, that kind of gives us a hint that Paul may have been aspiring to become the next high priest. And he certainly could have. But what happened? Lord God hold it. Philippians 3, verses 4 on to verse 11. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, and you read verse 3. Let's read verse 3. 
For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. When you got these people using this fancy schmancy rhetoric and all these fancy schmancy words when simpler ones could be used, they're doing it to put off this thing that they are intelligent, that they got the Spirit of God in them. They, what are they? they are showing you that they have a confidence in their flesh. And they're deceiving you. Not that everyone who uses high, you know, fancy schmancy language. No. But see, these Christians are doing that in place of the Spirit to fool you that they have the Spirit, which they don't. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things... Gain to me those I counted lost for Christ. Specifically, they're talking about losing the, you know, getting away, getting out from under the law when the Lord saves us, okay? For, yea, doubtless, and I count all things, all things that he held near and dear, but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but none, that I may win Christ. What are we reading to? Verse 11. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which, of, which is of the law. And you see this a lot in these Christians where they try to take the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount and make them doctrinally applicable for us today. Okay, what are they doing? They are boasting themselves. Okay, they are having confidence in their flesh. Okay, that's what they're doing. Okay, instruction in righteousness, yes, absolutely. Doctrinally salvific, no, not for today. Okay, let's continue. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Okay? And 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. See, what's happening today was happening in Corinth. Okay? All right? 1 Corinthians 2, verses 4 and verse 6. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit, capital S, the Lord himself, and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, philosophy, but in the power of God. Howbeit, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, not sinlessly perfect, perfect here, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Let's read the verse 8. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord. Enticing words of man's wisdom. The MacArthur's and all these guys who use all these fancy words it's like, dude, what does that even mean? Oh, you don't understand it. <laughs> Paul, who was brighter than you, kept it plain for people. As we are too. Okay? And 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 17 and 18. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. 
For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, not being saved, are saved, it is the power of God. And see, Mark chapter 7 real quick. Mark chapter 7 verse 13. Mark chapter 7 verse 13. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. First Corinthians chapter 4, verses 18 and verse 20. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What will you? Shall I come unto you with a rod, or in love, and in the spirit of meekness? Just because someone, just because when you're listening to a five minute thing, you need to spend 20 minutes in the dictionary to know what the guy said, doesn't mean that someone is saved. Okay? All right? There's nothing wrong with having a good vocabulary. There's nothing wrong with using big, there, in and of itself, no. But see, these Christians are dependent upon that to fool you to convince you that they are not, that they are something that they are not saved. Saved. Okay? Even Pete Ruckman, who knew all the fancy uh, uh, lingo and dialect. <laughs> I actually have one of his books now. I tried reading one of his books while I was at Brother Alexander's place. Um, Oh, I forget which one. The um, uh, um, the power of negative thinking, thinking, and I couldn't, I couldn't read that thing. It was just because all I could hear is him speaking. Okay, <laughs> but um, even Ruckman kept it plain, simple. Whereas a lot of these Christians, especially a lot of these streaming guys, use all these big fancy schmancy words. Okay. And see, people have been trained by the Jesuits that if someone can sound like that, and if, especially if they got the piece of paper to prove it, they're, they're like enamored in awe of these people because of their education. And to quote Mr. Uh, Peter Ruckman, some of these guys have, got, uh, have to be that educated to be that stupid. Acts chapter 4. Chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses 39 and verse 22. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. Hold your place there. John 7, just one verse. John 7, 15. John 7, 15. John 7, 15. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? So in Acts chapter 4, now verse 13, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. That they, they didn't go to the schools. They didn't have the degree. They didn't, they didn't have the fancy schmancy language. Okay, they weren't using rhetoric or the tricks of the trivium or ever, whatever nonsense. Okay, they were speaking plainly. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. You know, our Lord says that I will give you a mouth that your opponent, that your enemies cannot gain, say, nor be against. Oh, but they do with all these fancy schmancy things that they do. And see, that's a cover. It's a cover, friend. you got to understand that. It's a cover. You've been trained that if someone has a degree, that means that they're intelligent. That means that they're anointed. 
You look at what the college system is today, about how it has been demoted, that everybody's getting like the highest grades that they can in college. You know, on the channel here, there's this dated old video, The College Conspiracy, which has Gerard Salente in it. Um, <laughs> Uh, that was that's over what almost 20 years old I think that video is but it's very true okay college education means nothing nowadays beware okay but see the enemy knows when you have been with Jesus because the Lord Jesus lives within you and beholding the man which was healed standing with them they could not say nothing against it when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them, that they speak henceforth no, to no man in this name. And they called them, and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shewed. They had been with Jesus. And this is, of course, before the stoning of Stephen when the gospel was being first given to the Jew only. Okay. Now, Revelation chapter 17. Many others have undertaken to do the work of this uh, even on this channel too, there are stuff about it. Like I said, I you got to give credit where it's due. Even His Holiness, if He hasn't taken them down and making people pay for it, whatever, whatever. But if you can find it on His Holiness's channel, watch them. He did a good job, okay? Proving that America is not Babylon. But see, the time we live, people are willing. And when you got people who are purposely, who are not ignorant. That's the thing. If some of these guys were actually ignorant, didn't know better, they, they, it's like, whoa, whoa, dude. Dude, you, you're lying. Do you, oh, I didn't know. That's different. But when you got someone who's a scholar, who talks about all this and history of the Roman Catholic Church, um, excuse me, of Catholicism and stuff like that, they're not ignorant. They know what they're doing, man. Dude, look at me. They know what they're doing. When they tell you that America is Babylon, guys like that, you know, use the fancy rhetoric, say, well, this is America. They are knowingly serving the Vatican, diverting attention away from Rome. That's not a thing of ignorance on their part. Dude. These people are not your friends. They're not your brethren. Watch out. But then again, are you saved? Revelation chapter 17. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Remember that. Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now, kings of the earth. Are the kings of the earth today <laughs> coming to the White House? Come on. Come on. Even you my, and some of my enemies. Come on, you gotta laugh at that. Come on, come on. Knowing how wicked America is, are they? Are they laughing? Are they, are they, you got the the guy from France. You got the King of England. You got the other all these people coming to the White House to meet, <laughs> smoking Joe, or even uh, uh, Napoleon. Um, you know Donald Trump, huh? <laughs> no, no. 
Are they going to Jerusalem to meet the rabbi, the head rabbi? <laughs> no. Where do the rulers of the world usually end up at? Oh, that'd be before the Pope. Rome, the Vatican. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman of the church sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, the colors of the Vatican. Ah, uh, uh, no, Brad, the colors of the Vatican are white and gold, right? When you look at the processions of the cardinals and the bishops, historically, historically, of the Vatican, her colors are purple and scarlet, okay? The color, the, you know, the Vatican flag with the, the papal insignia and the spiritual and temporal keys on there, all right? That, that's diversion. The colors of Mystery Babylon, the cardinals and the bishops, it's right there, okay? I've even heard this, this one Jesuit guy that I met the one time when I was employed at the secular place uh, tried to say that this uh, in the Greek could have meant green, trying to point to Islam. <laughs> it's Rome, okay? And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls Look at all the ornateness of Roman Catholicism. Have you ever been in a Roman Catholic church? Have you seen the gold and the jewels? Kind of like um, uh, the anointed cherub in Ezekiel chapter 28 with all those precious uh, stones that were his covering, huh? This is Rome, man. This is Rome. Okay? And, hey, genius. America's colors <laughs> purple and scarlet. I don't I, I get it because of what we looked at in Second Timothy chapter four. I don't understand, even though I kind of do, how could someone truly seriously looking at the text be like this this isn't America? What in the wide world? And of course, I'm sure these guys will. Uh, the Greek word for this. Which Greek, pal? Which Greek? Having a golden cup in her hand, full of the abominations, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. The golden chalice that they raise and the, the round bale sun cookie. Okay? This, this is simple. But see, people are at the point now where they're not hearing the word of the Lord. They're not, they're not even looking into Bibles, okay? Christianity, Satan it has made Christianity look stupid like it is, okay? And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots, mother church, and abominations of the earth, Babylon. Rome, Catholicism, is the religion of Babylon perfected. Okay? Read the two Babylons. Except skip the part where it uh, exposes uh, Christ's mass, because that's not true. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And I wondered, and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Is America drunken with the blood of the saints? Where is the persecution, the violent persecution as documented and Fox's Book of Martyrs that came at the hands of Rome. Where is that in America, you idiot? Well, that's in Jerusalem. 
No. Oh, sure, Israel, yes, yes, they did persecute the saints, yes, they did. Nothing like what Rome did, has done, in the millions. There's only one that fits this. And see, someone working for the Vatican will come to what is plain using hyperbole, using uh, fancy schmancy dialect and rhetoric. To say, well, it actually, yea, had God said, people, this is Roman Catholicism. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. They that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. Seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now, people will bring up, well, the seven mountain thing is also applies to Jerusalem. Rather, there is a poem or a limerick about, the, uh, about Rome being the, uh, the uh, city on the seven mountains, okay? You gotta remember this one thing too. The original papal chair is not where it is now. Satan moved that to divert, to confuse. The original place of the papal throne where it was originally, which the scripture tells us of, was purposely moved. But that place will be reinstituted again after the body of Christ is redeemed. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Okay? And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. When he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are their peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Look at verse 1 again. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying, come, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. The waters are likened unto what? Peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Is America? Give me a break. Is America sitting on all these peoples, nations, and tongues? <laughs> Ask an Arab about that one. <laughs> ask, ask a rabid uh, Brizraelite about that one. Ask a Canadian about that one. Huh? No. Are, are the Jews? See, that's another thing that people want. It's the Jews that rule the world. Uh, no. Scripturally, it is impossible for the Jews to be in control of the world today. They are the tail. Okay? All right, uh, uh, there will be uh, um, Jews or the Jesuits uh, will be in the description box, okay? There's only one that perfectly fits all of this, and that's Roman Catholicism. And see, in order to teach contrary, they will use philosophy, they will use uh, man's words, they will do, yea, hath God said. They'll say, well, the Greek is. Do you realize, do you, 
dude, do you realize this? Okay, someone coming to something this plain and saying it's an it's America. They they're ignorant, willfully ignorant. Or they're a coadjutor for the Vatican. That's it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And a certain individual, there's no way he's ignorant of this. There's no way. Stephen Anderson wasn't ignorant. And yet, he's saying he, he made money off of making a movie, America is Babylon. No, it isn't. Roman Catholicism is Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. A is America a city. It's Jerusalem. Jerusalem is not the city that is ruling over the kings of the earth right now. It's not. At our Lord's second coming, that's a different story. That's the kingdom of heaven. You can, we got to get through the, the y'all got to get through the uh, uh, time of Jacob's trouble yet before we come back at the second coming with our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Rome. The Vatican. Dear friend, the Vatican. Listen, listen. Most people who are going to tell you that America is Babylon, they aren't ignorant. Okay, they're not. They're not. Okay? It is, even Jesuits themselves, in the book by Leone, the, 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 here, this book, uh, where, where, where is that book? Uh, where is that book? Um, th this book by Jacopo Leone, okay? It, it, the, the Jesuits, even themselves, uh, admit. They, it's like, yeah, yeah, Revelation chapter 17, yeah, that's talking about us. Yes, even they will admit that. They have to because it's the facts. And you got some twit coming around saying that America is Babylon. Dude. That's not ignorance. That is willful deception, seeking to deceive people and to have them to believe a lie. Okay? That is evil. That is wicked. Defending the Vatican. These people are not your friends. They aren't your brethren. Watch out for anyone. Anyone who's going to tell you that America is Mystery Babylon. Watch out for anyone who tells you other than Rome is Mystery Babylon. Inquire first if they are legitimately ignorant, not knowing better. That's different. If they are willfully ignorant, which is stupid, then there's only one other option. Lord rebuke you, you satanic, filthy devil. You servant of the Vatican. And how appropriate, because you yourself are a whore who take, you know, entertain all these other people. You're a whore just like your mother. Mystery Babylon the Great. Roman Catholicism, who you serve. Watch out for these people, brethren. People, watch out for people telling you that Mystery Babylon is anything other than Rome. Thank you for watching this if you do.